My first book was about the society of, about habitant society, about, about settlers in early Quebec. And um, the unfinished business when I'd finished that was the rebellion of 1837-38, which, in which they had played a central part. And so this was my attempt to, you know, do political history like a social historian. It used to be, as no longer the case, that there was a sort of a, a sense of this great divide in Canadian history between those who did political history and those who did social history. I, I think it was always a bit of a bogus distinction, but um, I particularly wanted to bring those together. So you have a, you know, quintessentially political uh, event this, uh, call, it a, call it a rebellion or a, or a failed revolution or just a revolutionary crisis, uh, that's, uh, you know, a pretty important punctuation point uh, between uh, the conquest and uh, confederation, I suppose. Um, and I wanted to know uh, what the involvement was of the the majority of the people involved were agricultural farming people or peasants in the as they would be called in in lower canada um, so uh, contrary to the assumptions of english canadian historiography it's way more important it's a much bigger deal in quebec than it is in in what becomes Ontario, so in Lower Canada. Uh, and it's uh, fundamentally uh, a conflict that takes place in the countryside. There's an important urban dimension that I don't get into because my, my focus was, you know, what's it, what's it about f with the farming people? And Historiographically, where we were when I was started was, yes, there's a whole lot of peasants who are involved and they're all stupid and their economy isn't working and they're hungry and they get bamboozled by fast-talking politicians and that's the whole story because they happen to be the ones who take up arms. Okay, um, So I started looking at the, the records that were closest to the ground, which is essentially... Um, uh, written records of the interrogation of political prisoners. So if someone is arrested, and there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people arrested, they, a statement would be taken by a magistrate. Uh, so there's that, and then there are the, their counterpart, which is people accusing other people. So people against the patriots, the, the rebels of the patriots, um, making statements denouncing a neighbor or an acquaintance or someone who had performed an action that seemed seditious or treasonable. Um, so I, I, so I went right to the kind of the ground level uh, of um, uh, the rebellion in the rural communities and um, uh, tried to find out what was going on and. and in the end, when I put things together, it did not look to me like some kind of irrational outburst by people who didn't know anything. Um, it looked instead like um, uh, the sort of defensive actions of rural communities threatened by external attack, in this case by units of the British Army, um, who are falling back on um, a kind of... Uh, uh, I suppose you might call it folk culture, but the, the culture that uh, had developed over generations in these rural communities, um, things to do with um, the, the organization of the militia, the organization of local parishes, you know, the development of leadership styles, uh, rituals that had been used, for example, the Charavari ritual, which had been deployed against people who married someone the community disapproved of, basically when there was a mismatch in age uh, or marital status. Uh, it gets politicized and it gets deployed against political enemies. So uh, local magistrates or militia officers that are loyal to the crown 
get subjected to this ritual that involves people coming uh, in the dark of night in costumes and disguises with their faces blackened so that you can't see them, with pots and pans and drums and horns and noise-making instruments and just creating havoc around your house so that you can't sleep. So this had been a kind of, um, you know, a kind of bacchanalian uh, celebration that had occurred traditionally when, for example, some old widower marries a young girl uh, in the past. So this is used for political purposes. So um, instead of d dismissing this all as, uh, you know, kind of uh, irrational uh, activities, I tried to find the reason that underlay these activities and the, and the cultural traditions that sustained them uh, and that allowed, you know, basically law-abiding, peaceful, normally peaceful country folk to, you know, mount a quite serious uh, insurrection and opposition to government. It was, it, it failed, but it was, it was by no means trivial.